listening to SOJC Radio, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. Good evening and welcome to Friday Night SOJC Remnant Gathering. Grab your Bible and your pens and your paper and when two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is right here with us. So thank you for joining us and here's Brother David. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the January 6th, 2023 edition of the FOJC Remnant Gathering. I am David Carey Cohen. For the next hour, we're going to be studying the Word of God. So thankful to have all of you joining us this evening. Our study for this evening is going to be entitled, The Almost Christian. By way of announcement, this Sunday night, live streaming on the FOJC Rumble channel will resume this Sunday night at 8 o'clock. There will be another live stream broadcast on the Hollow Earth by Tracy Vinay, and I guarantee you it will be extremely frosty. Be guaranteed it will be. And there is a link on our homepage to Tracy's uh, website and YouTube channel. He walks with us everywhere. Go over there and subscribe to her YouTube channel. She's got new content coming out several times a week. The material that she has done here on FOJC and surprises will be coming up this year. So you need to be subscribed to He Walks With Us Everywhere. Just say amen and subscribe. We have a lot of things as always to pray about. Cecil and Sue, they need a touch in their body and they need healing. Linda needs healing from pneumonia. Gail's sister needs healing. Carol's granddaughter is being plagued with bad dreams. Raymond needs wisdom and discernment. And Kathleen is needing closure in her divorce. It's a a very stressful situation. And Daniel and Hannah lost their pet and they're grieving. And the Lord knows how to comfort those that mourn. So let's go to prayer and thank you. People are using the forms. There are new forms on our website for prayer requests, praise reports, and questions. And it is just helping us process uh, and uh, be able to meet the needs the very best that we are able. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to lift up Cecil and Sue to you this evening. Father, we just pray that you just touch their bodies. They They need a healing. And we just pray in Jesus' name that you touch them now. Also, Linda needs healing from pneumonia. Father, we just pray in Jesus' name that you touch her. And also, Gail's sister, in Jesus' name, we just pray the healing anointing of Calvary upon them. Father, we pray for this little little girl that's being plagued with bad dreams. In Jesus' name, we just rebuke them. And we just pray that you give her the sweet sleep of the righteous. We want to pray for Daniel and Hannah. Father, we want to just pray that you comfort them with the loss of their little pet. We know that we love our animals, so we just pray, Father, that you comfort them. We want to pray for Raymond, for wisdom and discernment, and for Kathleen that's going through this time of divorce, that you'll just give her peace and calm of mind in this time. Father, we want to pray for this message tonight that you'll just let it go forth with truth and clarity and to reach those that need to be born again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Worship the Lord for just a few moments and we're going to be back with our study for this evening, The Almost Christian. We're sorry, but because of copyright rules, you cannot hear my music. 
However, if you want to hear the message in its entirety with my music, you can join us on the radio page on Friday night for the live audio broadcast at 6 p.m. Central Time, or you can listen on our podcast page at fojcradio.com. Here's Brother David. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts, the 26th chapter and the 28th verse. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And King Agrippa's words before Paul is an example of what John Wesley called heathen honesty. And John Wesley, in his sermons, has a sermon on this text, which is a very worthwhile read. And Brother Wesley said, and now in this being almost a Christian, is implied first heathen honesty. And it's much better to be an honest heathen than a presumptuous professor. And someone that admits they're not saved is in a much better spiritual place than someone that thinks they're saved when they are not. And we're going to engage together in a little spiritual examination. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So we're going to do that this evening. We're going to do that together. And I would warn us all that this is not going to be a touchy-feeling, touchy-feely little study. But it is going to be real food for the soul. It'll be real food for the believer. Now, I'll warn you that what we're doing is spoken against by (laughs) the modern religious establishment. Uh, Charles Stanley, in his book, uh, Eternal Security, Can You Be Sure? This is the book that just keeps on giving, I tell you. Uh, Charles Stanley and I would agree that the grass is green and the sky is blue, but beyond that... I don't think there's a whole lot that uh, we would have in common. But on page 13, Mr. Stanley says this, People who are constantly examining their spiritual condition tend to fall into the trap of legalism. But against Mr. Stanley's warning, we're going to proceed and we're going to do as the Bible commands us to do. We're going to examine ourselves. And of course, we're going to be examining ourselves by the Word of God. And when we allow it, the Word of God will go down into the very deepest parts of us in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Now just think about that. We're a body, we're a soul, and we're a spirit. And the Word of God will get right down to where your soul and spirit join. It'll get down to the deepest part of you and I. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And that's what we're going to let it do. We're going to do that. And we're going to have a little group spiritual examination And we're just going to pray this prayer in the 139th Psalm in verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the life everlasting. Our guide on this examination this evening is going to be a Puritan by the name of Matthew Mead. He was a Puritan minister in London. He died in the year 1699 and in 1661 this book was published called The Almost Christian Discovered. And in this he has seven ways to determine whether you are operating under 
your natural man or your spiritual man. It's a real examination to the deepest part of us whether we really are in the faith or not. So we're going to do that and we're going to begin with the, the with the first thing Brother Mead said, and he talks about the marks of a natural conscience. He said, if a natural man's conscience puts him upon duty, he usually bounds himself in the work of God. A renewed conscience is a spring of universal obedience, for it sees an infinite excellency goodness and holiness in God and therefore would fain have its services rise up towards some proportionableness to its object if I limit myself in my obedience to the holy God love one commandment and slight another obey in one point and yet lie cross on another then all I do is but the workings of a natural conscience. And this is one of the perfect ways, and I think we've all done this at one time or another. When we, uh, you know, when we repent, you know, we'll repent of one thing, but we won't repent of another. When it comes to obedience, there are some things we like to do, and some things that we just don't, and many times we don't. But to tell that you have a renewed conscience Instead of a carnal conscience, you do not pick and choose the laws of God, but your heart rejoices in obedience to each and every one of them. In Psalm 119 and verse 6, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. The renewed conscience will have respect unto every one of the commandments of God. And when you find yourself wanting to pick and choose between the commandments of God and you see this thing operating in other people, you know that this is a natural conscience and it is not a renewed conscience. In Psalm 119 and verse 28, my soul melteth for heaviness strengthen thou me according to thy word and the Lord will certainly strengthen us and in Psalm 119 128 therefore I therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and I hate every false way such a great scripture therefore I esteem all all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. This is what so many people will do when there there are strict scriptures that are going to go against things that they love to do. They're just going to dismiss them, and they're going to think that because they obey some of the commandments of God, that that excuses them in obeying others. But this is an almost Christian and not a Christian at all. The second thing that Brother Mead says, if a natural man's conscience checks or accuses for sin, then he seeks to stop the mouth of it, but not to satisfy it. Now here we're going to get down to it. There are two ways we deal when our conscience convicts us of something there's one thing for your conscience to convict you of something and it's another thing for the Holy Spirit to convict you of something now it says here brother Mead said the natural man seeks to still the noise of the conscience rather than to remove the guilt the believer seeks the removal of guilt by the application of Christ's blood and then conscience is quiet of itself and when the when the point of of conviction from the conscience comes it's so easy to ignore it to try to put it out of your mind to try to slough it off and go ahead and do that which you know your conscience is telling you not to do but the problem is when you do that and you do it again and you do it again you come to the place where you have a defiled conscience in 1st Timothy chapter 3 and verse 9, the scripture tells us that this is our goal, 
in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 9, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. We should follow Christ in such a way that our conscience is clear. And in Titus chapter 1, and we'll begin reading in verse 14 here, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. And this is speaking of those that were giving heed to Jewish fables, that were giving heed to the things that were to become the Oral Torah, the Kabbalah, and the Talmud. And the Word of God doesn't speak very well of them. In verse 16 it says they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. And our conscience... When it is renewed, our mind is renewed by the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will give us a conscience that will act in concord with the Word of God. But when people follow the teachings of men and the commandments of men, your conscience is going to be soul defiled instead of leading you into truth. It's going to lead you into error. The the saying that let your conscience be your guide This isn't always true, because many people have such a defiled conscience that it's a very poor guide that they have. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, and this is the problem that will arise. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And every time that your conscience prompts you to do something, or not to do something and you stifle it it's just like you stick a rag in your conscience's mouth every time you do that you are searing your conscience the next time your conscience calls out to you the voice will be a little bit weaker and it will continue to be seared until finally there's no call at all and this is what the word of God God calls a reprobate. Brother Mead said, but if when the conscience checks, it will not be satisfied with anything but the blood of Christ, and therefore I use duties to bring me upon Christ, and if I beg the sprinkling of his blood upon conscience, and labor not so much to stop the mouth of it, as to remove the guilt of it, then this is a renewed conscience. The renewed new man in Christ will cleanse the conscience by the blood of Christ. The natural man will stick a rag in the mouth of conscience, so to speak, and sear it with the hot iron. And the way that we do this is very clear in the Word of God. We need to have our consciences pure aligned with the Word of God so that our consciences can be our guide. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Our consciences need purged by the blood of Jesus so that they can truly be a true and right guide for us. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The blood of Jesus will sprinkle and clean our conscience to where our conscience will be a right ally to the Holy Spirit and be a guide unto us and we can hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience but when conscience checks as Brother Mead said don't stick a rag in its mouth cleanse it with the blood of Jesus and bring ourselves into alignment and this is one of the deepest ways in our heart of hearts that we know 
that we are operating under a renewed conscience instead of a natural conscience. And by the natural conscience, it's just that old man. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, the Word of God tells us. But the new man in Christ, it has a renewed conscience that will seek after the things of the Spirit of God. In First John chapter 3, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. And there are things that only you and I know about ourselves. And when we are in prayer and our heart condemns us, we'll either stick a rag in it or we'll cleanse it. In verse 21, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. There is the obedience to the outward commands of God that is incumbent upon us all. And then there is that obedience to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit whispering in our conscience. And when our conscience checks us, let's cleanse it instead of sticking a rag in it. And this is one of the most profound and clear ways whether we are operating under a natural conscience or a renewed one. Brother Mead said upon on page 96 of his book, There is no natural man. Let him go never so far. Let him do never so much in the matters of religion But still he has his Delilah, his bosom lust. Now this isn't something that's very flattering for us all to admit. But each and every one of us has a sinful nature. And each and every one of us has weaknesses. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us and each and every one of us we have a darling Delilah that lies in our heart that is our ultimate joy and our ultimate sinful pleasure and we'll get out the word of God and we'll use the Delilah finder and we'll let the word of God help us find our Delilah in Romans chapter 7 and let's look at verse 15 For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. And that word allow means I understand not. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking. And he says, the things that I do, I don't understand. I'm doing what I hate to do. Now, when a person is born again, They do not want to sin. But when there is a darling Delilah in our hearts, your darling Delilah is that thing which you have repented of multiple times. And this is true with each and every child of God, that there are things that are a problem. The darling Delilah for you is not the darling Delilah for me, but like Brother Mead said, We all have them. In Romans chapter 7, beginning in verse 19, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. And this is the case which each and every one of us, we have that thing within our heart that is the biggest problem for us. You might call it, it's our biggest sinful pleasure that we want to indulge in or whatever. It's a Delilah. It's there. It's that thing that we've struggled with. It's that thing that we've come back to multiple times. We've sinned. We've repented. But there is a place where we can come and we can give up our Delilah. In Psalm chapter 119 and the 104th verse, Psalm 119 and 104, Through thy precepts 
I get understanding and I hate every false way. And in Psalm chapter 68 and verse 18, the word of God tells us, Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, for that the Lord God might dwell also among them. And the word of the Lord tells us that they that name the name of the Lord, that they should depart from iniquity. And that is found in the epistle of Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. So there is a time when we are commanded to depart from iniquity. There is time when we must part company with our darling Delilah. In 2 Timothy 2 and 19, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And each and every one of us has iniquity. And what our iniquity is, it's our propensity to do sin. And our iniquity comes from our parents. And the, we, when, we're, when we're born, we get the good and the bad from our parents. That's just the way it is, and there's no changing that. But your iniquity is not the same as my iniquity but we all have our iniquities and we all have our darling Delilah's but we can come to the place where we can say that we are going to give up that which has been the closest to our heart that which has been the hardest for us to give up we can say with Abraham there's the perfect illustration of this in the book of Genesis chapter 22 and verse 2 the scripture says and he said now take thy son thine only son Isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of and Abraham loved his son more than anything and he did not want to give up his son but when he obeyed the Lord, the Lord provided a sacrifice, Jehovah Jireh. He came to the place where he was willing to give up that thing that he loved the most. And each and every one of us, we have our darling Delilah, we have our Isaac, we have that thing that is keeping us from coming into that place that First John talked about, where when we can come to the place where our conscience does not condemn us, then God is there to answer prayer in a way that is over and above anything that we have ever experienced. So let the Lord pluck that darling Delilah from our hearts this evening. Let us take that Delilah and lay it upon the altar just like Abraham laid his son Isaac upon the altar and there it said the Lord provided Jehovah Jireh when we lay our Isaacs upon the altar this is the time and this is the place when the provision of God kicks in like we've never seen before or we never have imagined and there are so many people that don't even believe that's there's victory in Jesus. And I want to tell you there is victory in Jesus. There's never such a place that we're going to come where there's absolute sinless perfection. That's something the Lord doesn't expect of us because we're not capable of it. But there is, just like, just like it is said that sin remains, but it does not reign. And the Holy Ghost of heaven can pluck that darling Delilah out of our heart. We can go from that sin repent cycle into the anointing of the Holy Spirit, into that new realm of provision, into that new realm of answered prayer, and it can only take place by the Spirit of God burning that thing out of our carnal nature. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, it works like this. And it works no other way. For the law of the Spirit 
of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We are bound by our carnal natures. It will be with us until we die. But through the Holy Spirit and through faith in the cross, a continual outpouring of the Holy Spirit unto us will give us that supernatural anointing to live and fulfill the law by faith. And in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God can reach down and pluck that Isaac out of your heart. The devil will say, it's not possible. But the Word of God says, lay your son Isaac on the altar, and the fire of God will burn that out. There is victory in Jesus. There absolutely is. And the person that's operating under a natural conscience, they're going to say, well, nobody's perfect. They're going to say, well, uh, the Lord knows my heart, and that's the problem. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But if we will bring our, our Isaac and lay it upon the altar, the Lord will take it this afternoon, and he'll give us the victory in Jesus' name. Brother Mead, the fourth thing Brother Mead said, he said a natural man prides himself in his duties. If he is much in duty, then he is much lifted up under his duty. And the way that we would paraphrase that in modern terminology is that he is all about his little self. And the natural man is all about works. And the natural man, the more that he works, the more that he prides himself in his religious works. And Jesus gave the perfect illustration of this in the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter, and beginning in verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. This is the mark of a renewed conscience. It will glorify the Lord and not their own works. Brother Mead said, Thus a believer, when he is highest in duties, then he is lowest in humility. Duty puffs up the hypocrite. But a believer comes away humbled. Why? Because the hypocrite has no visions of God. He has seen only his own gifts and parts and thus exalts him. And this is the game that Satan will play with each and every one of us when we we begin to serve God and when we begin to start seeing some results, then Satan will say, Boy, ain't you something. Just look at your little self. And he will push us into pride. He will push us in to exalting ourselves. And this is just exactly what he wants to do. Because he will switch us from operating under a renewed conscience that's in tune with the Holy Spirit back into the conscience of that old man. And that is going to take us down each and every time. Jesus put it this way in the Gospel of Matthew the 23rd verse the 23rd chapter and the 12th verse he said and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted and this is the way that 
we receive promotion in the kingdom of God. And it's right that each and every one of us, once should our vision should not be to be successful in a worldly standard, but to be successful in the work of the kingdom. But the way to be successful in the kingdom of God is exactly the opposite as in the world. The more you exalt yourself in the world, the faster you go up the food chain. But in the kingdom of God, the way to be exalted is to humble yourself. This is totally different than the world. And we should be, shouldn't we? In Psalm chapter 75, verse 6 and 7, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one, and setteth up another. And when we will humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and seek to obey him, and get rid of our Delilah, and walk in a pure conscience, my goodness, the Lord is going to send promotion, The Lord is going to send blessing, and the Lord is going to release provision. When Isaac was offered up, there was a sacrifice provided. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And lay your Isaac upon the cross. Get your conscience in tune with the Holy Spirit, and there will be a supercharge of provision and answered prayer That will absolutely astound us all. Well, we're going to take a break, and we have a lot more to share with you here on the FOJC Remnant Gathering, and we will be back in just a moment. We have much to offer here on FOJCRadio.com. Most listeners are familiar with our radio page where we're live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time. And in, it includes our chat room where listeners can fellowship and read the scriptures that I post while Brother David's teaching. If you can't catch us live, we offer our podcast page with the latest audios of our remnant gatherings or these same audios are made into videos and now videos on two new video channels. The easiest way to find our new channels is to go to our ministry news page on FOJCRadio.com. On that page, you'll find links to our new channels uh, on Varidion and the Underground Church FOJC. And there's also links to our Doctrine of Christ series on Jimmy Vision and our Vault series. This makes it a lot easier for you to get the information with just a click. You'll find if there's going to be any events, we have that information on there. And we have um, a link to our free books and lots of other info, the latest info is on the ministry news page. I've tried to include answers to frequently asked questions on our Hot Topics page. We also try to help our listeners find local fellowship in their area with the Remnant Locations page. And for those who struggle with abuse issues, I offer my Ritual Abuse and Healing page. Our contact page has a short order form some links for your love gifts, and of course, our contact information. On our resources page, you can find a list of our books, CDs, DVDs, free Bible studies, and tracts that can be printed or read. Check out our online Bible school or our music page. Both include easy-to-click audio files. And most important is our God Wants to Save You page. If you need help in leading someone to the saving mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are plenty of uh, things to choose from on that page, including a little prayer that I wrote uh, to help lead people to accepting the Lord and inviting Him to be their Lord and Savior. It's all there, all free, so please use these many things that we offer on our website. We appreciate your support and have tried to make our site easy to navigate. 
But if you have a problem finding something, just email me at lastdayschurch at cs.com and I will be happy to help. Blessings to all our listeners and thanks again for your prayers and encouragement. Now back to tonight's message with Brother David Carrico on FOJC Radio. Welcome back to the FOJC Remnant Gathering. And as I always do at the break, I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you that studies with us and that prays for us and that supports us with your gifts and with your kindness. We do appreciate it from the very bottom of our heart. We're going to get back into the Word of God. We're doing a little spiritual examination this evening. And I warned you it was going to be tough. But when we examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith, we need to let the Word and the Spirit of God go to the very deepest parts of our heart and search us out. Search me, O God, and see. It goes much deeper than just our actions we go down, let the Spirit of God go down in the motives that motivate our actions. Brother Mead said this on page 98 of his book, The Almost Christian Discovered, and this is the fifth test of how to know whether you're operating under a natural conscience or renewed conscience. He said, look what that is to which the heart secretly renders the glory of of a duty and that is the principle of the duty now in Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 16 it says therefore they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous in other words their sacrifice and their attention is for that which was going to give them more increase, more carnal means, and more carnal security. And when a person says they're serving God, and when you and I, uh, when we claim to serve God, are we really, and just like Brother Mead said, look to the end of what that duty glorifies. Is that really glorifying God? Is it really for Him? Or like so many are they saying they're doing it for God but it's really only ingratiating themselves this is something that goes to the very deepest part of our motives of that which we do for the Lord and it's something that is a part of this little spiritual examination this afternoon. Brother Mead said this. He said there are two things that are very hard. One is to take the shame of our sins to ourselves. The other is to give the glory of our services to Christ. Now then, if I sacrifice to my own net, if I aim at my own credit or profit, and give the glory of all I do to self, then I sow to the flesh, and was never cast out of the self, but act only from a natural conscience. And truly, our service to God must, and certainly, the Lord blesses us when we serve Him, but truly, our goals and ambitions has to be for that which lifts up Christ, and that which is for the blessing, and the benefit of others and for that which blesses and lifts up the kingdom of God. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, and he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life truly we will reap what we sow and the Lord knows the very deepest thoughts and intents of our heart in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 the scripture says for I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live 
yet not I. Now those three words there are huge. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And we have to understand that everything we do for the Lord, we have to remember, yet not I, anything that is right and proper and profitable unto others in the kingdom of God, it is yet not I, but is Christ that lives in in us yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me yet not I are three words that we want to never forget the number six thing the number six test that brother Meade has to know if we're operating under a natural or renewed conscience. He said, though a natural conscience may put a man much upon service, yet it never presses to the attainment of holiness. The foolish virgins, you know, took their lamps, but took no oil in their vessels. That is, they looked more after a profession than after a sanctification. And how true it is that Satan will just let, I tell you what, I say often that I believe that Satan wakes a lot of people up so they won't be late for church on Sunday morning. And sadly, I believe that that is the case. And keeping people busy in religion is one of Satan's biggest accomplishments. While it is right and proper to have a labor of love and a work of faith that must spring from the anointing of the Holy Spirit and always that sanctification of heart has to be primary over dead religious works. We read the scripture in Hebrews about how the Spirit of God will cleanse us from dead religious works. In Matthew 25, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And they were all virgins. It wasn't five saved people and five unsaved people. There were ten virgins. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. It is absolutely possible for children of God to move from operating under a renewed conscience to falling back under operating after the conscience and the motivation of that old man and the flesh. And every once in a while, we need ourselves a little bit of spiritual examination. The seventh check that Brother Mead has that we can test ourselves if we're operating under a renewed or a natural conscience. He says, and lastly, if a natural conscience is the spring of duty, why then this spring runs fastest at the first and so abates at the last and dries up? Now that is really good, isn't it? And lastly, if a natural conscience is the spring of duty, Why then this spring runs fastest at first and so abates and at last dries up. If you've been in the Lord very long, you have seen people that are off with the with the bang so to speak they're holy fireballs and there's nothing wrong with being excited and zealous but after a while they're nowhere to be found they're just like a roman candle they burn hot but they burn out quick and this is a sure sign that you're operating under a natural conscience. When you're operating under renewed conscience, you can serve God for 50 years and be more excited about the Lord than the day you were born again. And that is an absolute fact and an absolute truth. When you're really operating from a renewed conscience, the Bible says lukewarm is spewed out. You know, you're going to burn out. You ain't going to rust out. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 19, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works the last to be more than the first the last of the works was more than the first and this is the way that it always should be we should not be resting upon 
our accomplishments or our past victories, but always that renewed conscience is going to push us onward to seek after the living God. Jesus put it this way in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And if we operate under the power of the Holy Spirit and a renewed conscience, we are going to be more excited about the Lord at the end of the race than we are at the first. And we don't have to worry about doing it ourselves. And of course, we're going to have to take uh, available the means of grace in prayer and fellowship we have at our disposal. But I tell you what, we got something going for us in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a scripture each and every one of us can take to our heart. The Lord will not let go of you. He is going to continue that good work in you. And if we follow him with a renewed conscience, we are going to be more and more blessed as we go on. In Philippians 2.13, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. God not only gives us the desire to do something, but he also gives us the ability to do it. I want to close this little self-examination with a, a, with a word from Charles Spurgeon. Do you have something you want to say, Donna? Okay. Sister Donna has something to say here in a minute. And I want to read a paragraph from Charles Spurgeon's sermon on the almost Christian. Also a very, very worthwhile read. And Brother Spurgeon said this, My brethren, the preaching of the gospel minister should always have soul winning for its object. Never should we seek that the audience should admire our excellency of speech. I have in my soul a thousand times cursed oratory, and I wish that the arts of elocution had never been devised or at least had never profaned the sanctuary of God. For often, as I have listened with wonder to speech right well conceived and sentences aptly arranged, I have yet felt as though I could weep tears of blood that the time of the congregation on the Sabbath should be wasted by listening to worldly rhetoric, when what was wanted was a plain, urgent pleading with men's hearts and consciences. It is never worth a minister's while to go up his pulpit stairs to show his auditors that he is an adept in elocution. High-sounding words and flowery periods are a mockery of a man's spiritual needs. If a man desireth to display his oratory, let him study for the bar or enter parliament, but let him not degrade the cross of Christ into a peg to hang his tawdry rags of speech upon. And I hope that this evening we have spoke plainly and as I said at the beginning this is not going to be soothing but it certainly is going to be food for the soul of the righteous self-examination is painful but self-examination is something that is commanded by God and very needful and it is a blessing to the heart of the Israel of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And we'll close with 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse 12, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And Sister Donna has a word to share with you here before we close this evening. It's a word from the Lord. And you, thou old man, who do you think you are 
Do you really think you can do some things to please me and neglect others? Why do you fight against me every day? I have sent and given you my Holy Spirit to remind you of the words of my son Jesus. But you ignore the prompting of my spirit and seek to do your own way. You speak about all you know, but you do not know me. I speak to you out of a place of both love and sadness. I am grieved that you have made wrong choices. I am offering you all that I have. Humble yourself and ask me what is wrong and what you need to do about it. Ask me to change your heart. This is a choice that comes from both you and me. I choose to chastise the ones I love. I know your heart, and I could cleanse and renew your heart. But you must make the choice to allow me to do so. Come to me like the way you were born, naked and unashamed. I will do as I have promised. I will renew you in you a clean heart. I will draw you unto myself and never leave you or forsake you. Trust me, I am here. Amen. And I just encourage each and every one of you, myself and Donna included, to just let the Lord do that deep work in our heart. And just let the Lord just really draw us close, get the junk out, and just just do that work that only the Spirit of God can do. And if you have a praise report, we got a place for praise reports there. Uh, let us know what the Lord's doing in your life. We, we really like to know. Um, with that, we're going to close our message for this evening, as always, with great thanks for each and every one of you. Uh, tomorrow night on the Midnight Ride, going to be about Atlantis. It's going to be a going to be a hootie bob. Sunday night, 8 p.m. Uh, after Breaking Babylon, ba- Breaking Babylon comes on. I think it's six. Yes, it does. Six o'clock. Eight o'clock tomorrow night. Go to FOJCRadio.com. Go to our Rumble channel at 8 o'clock. We're going to be live scratching the surface of the hollow earth once again. It's going to be an awesome time. We invite each and every one of you to join us. With that, let's close out in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy toward us. Father, we thank you that you just extend your grace and mercy to us and father we thank you for the wooing of your holy spirit that will draw us closer and closer to you lord we love you so much and we just want to give you the praise for everything good that comes from this humble message in jesus name we pray amen and amen god bless you all and we will see you next friday night 6 p.m central on the fojc Remnant Gathering. Thank you for listening and joining in fellowship with us here at FOJC Radio Remnant Gathering. You can contact us at FOJC Post Office Box 671 Tell City, Indiana 47586 or you can email us at lastdayschurch at cs.com or you may call us at 812-836-2288 You can check out our website at www.fojcradio.com Thanks and God bless.